All right, good morning. Good morning, people. Today we're gonna go over, real quick, just basic setup with Zwift and indoor training. It's probably one of the biggest questions I get. Uh, connectivity issues, certain problems with the trainers. So I'm gonna go over basically the setup that I have, how I set it up, just go over a couple different things, things to, you know, maybe tips and tricks. But the setup that I have, I would say about 95% of the time, no issues connectivity wise or anything like that. So we're just gonna jump into it. We'll do a real quick overview of the trainers, types of trainers real quick, how to hook it up to Zwift and the different types of methods you can use to actually set it up. So real quick, let's look at trainers real quick. What type of trainers can we have? As you can see here, we have the Wahoo Kicker. It's a wheel off trainer. That means we have to take the rear wheel off. So I don't want to call it more of a permanent trainer, but it is a little more cumbersome for the average person to switch their bike out when they're riding indoors versus outdoors. You can get the Wahoo Kicker Snap, which I used to have, which has the rear wheel on. That's great for people that are using the same bike indoors and outdoors. Uh, it's just a lot easier to get the bike on and off because you don't have to take that rear wheel off. Again, the advantages of that is it's quick to swap the bike. The bike that I have here is a second tri bike that I have, so this one stays on the trainer all the time. So it's set up, it's easy to use, it's just kind of turn it on, it connects, but we'll get into that real quick. There's a couple different ways now on this smart trainer that we can connect this to our workout platform. And it doesn't have to be Zwift, it could be Trainer Road, it can be another one of those types of programs. I prefer using an actual computer. I used to use a dedicated laptop that I had. Just because the process is better, you get better graphics, better connectivity, you get uh, better antennas for that, that wireless connection. But I do have uh, a spare PC, which is a pretty decent PC. It's uh, I had to upgrade my regular computer in the office for editing these videos. So I was able to just say, well, let me just put a dedicated computer out here so I can connect Zwift to it. All right, first things we got to do, we got to power up the trainer here. Once you power it up, you're going to notice some lights are going to start blinking on the back here. You should have a red light and a blue light. What that means is the blue light is for Bluetooth connection and the red light, which some of you kind of seem confused about when I try and explain the different connections to you, is Ant Plus. It's a different type of connection than Bluetooth, so this actually has two different bands of connection that go to whatever you're using. The differences are, if you're using your phone or an iPad, they only connect via Bluetooth. If you have a computer, you can also connect with Ant Plus, which sometimes there's pros and cons to both, is easier to connect to. We'll get more into that in a minute, but what we got to do first is make sure that all of your hardware is up to date here. What that means is from time to time, if you're having issues especially, go on your phone, go on the Wahoo app, and right here, we need to update a few things so that your features can be used best. You hit I'm ready. It's updating the app because that has to be updated too. And first things first, you want to, when you get your trainer, is connect your trainer to the Wahoo app. And right here, we are ready because I haven't done it in a couple weeks. Wahoo Kicker software update. It's going to say connecting. It's going to do some updates. It's going to turn the trainer on and off. I just shut the lights off on the trainer. So it is doing something. It is installing. So give it a couple minutes. Make sure you do that. I would check every two weeks or every month. There's a reason why they're updating things. There's different connections. It's kind of like your phone. When you don't update to the newest iOS setting, some of the apps don't start you know, to work properly. So I always recommend making sure everything's up to date. And that will include Zwift when we get into that in a little bit. So for now, just make sure your install and everything goes up to date on this. And then we'll get on to the next step. All right, once you get back into the app right here, you're going to kick on whatever trainer you have, whichever Wahoo. Click that right here, scroll down. It's going to say latest version 4.2.8 as we record this would be your latest version. So your trainer's good. You're up to date. Whatever you're connecting it to now. So again, I like to use the computer. I have a separate keyboard, separate mouse right here. Open up Zwift. 
here we go another update so remember this if you're going for a group ride early in the morning things like that you may want to jump on 15 minutes early just to see what's going on Zwift does a lot of updates on here so while that updates let's go back to that amp plus versus bluetooth what is that we know what bluetooth is when we connect our headphones and things like that to our phones the thing to remember is unless you have the latest bluetooth technology in it and it is available for that type of device you have most bluetooth connections are a one-to-one -one connection what that means is if i pair a set of headphones to my phone that's just the only connection we have. Nobody else can have that same Bluetooth connection for a majority because there is a newer Bluetooth technology out there that allows multiple sharing, but you can only sh pair that with your phone. What the difference with AM Plus is it allows multiple connections. So for instance, if I have here on my bike, which power meter is an AMP Plus connection, this when it's activated can sync to my cycling computer as well as my watch if I'm running. It allows multiple connections. Now if I had a Bluetooth powered power meter and I had connected that Bluetooth power meter to my cycling computer, my watch would not be able to pick up the signal. Vice versa, if I sometimes use my watch to connect to that Bluetooth sensor and I want it to connect to my cycling computer now, once that gets activated, it may pair right to my watch because I've used it in the past. And now I can do anything I want to try and get this computer to pair with it, but it's not going to find it. So that could be a lot of the issues people are having is when they're trying to set up their trainer or trying to connect it via Bluetooth to the iPad, it may be finding a connection already with another Bluetooth device. So the important thing is to really cancel out all your Bluetooth connections, forget all the devices, you know, go on to the settings, Bluetooth on your phone, go to whatever device you have, and just hit forget and try and resync everything. Most computers come, or laptops, with Bluetooth built in, which is a great feature because you can right out of the box have that connected to it. Depending where your computer is or your laptop, here my computer is around the corner right here. So sometimes there is a little interference between the sensors down here and going around here because it's not a very powerful connection. Bluetooth signal does get lost the further you get away or there is interruptions. And especially in Zwift, you don't want even a, a slight interruption because if you do in a group race or a group ride, that drop in connection even for a couple seconds will slow your virtual rider down and you may lose the group. So let me just show you real quick how we overcame that and how we also added Ant Plus connections to the computer. So right out the back you can see those two USB cables right here. They're extensions that run down this way. So I have two extensions and connected to the ends of the extension are one Bluetooth dongle and one Ant Plus dongle. That allows for my computer to read Bluetooth and Ant Plus. So when we get into Zwift and the setup menu you'll be able to see we have different options on how to connect to these different sensors. All right, let's pop in on Zwift right here. All right, a lot of things started populating already on here. We're gonna go for a ride. And since we have a smart trainer, we want that power source, which is right here. We're gonna set up heart rate, cadence, and controllable. Controllable is your smart trainer. There you can see right there, it's Wahoo, Wahoo Power. Cadence is also built into this, uh, this kicker here. If your trainer does not use cadence, I'd recommend getting just a simple cadence sensor and being able to connect that right here. And I always like to use a heart rate strap. So let's search. It's picking up two heart rate straps that I just uh, went through. I use one for specifically for cycling and I also have the Garmin HRM Tri. And you can see they're popping up now as Ant Plus right here. The Garmin, the one that I have, is only an Ant Plus connection because it's usually meant to go with the watch. And that's gonna be this one right here which I'm currently wearing and that's why it has a signal. So connected. We can even unpair this and see what we got. So you can see most people are going to be connecting to this Bluetooth connection right here. It even just popped down right there, the connection. So I'm going to go on here for power. That's my stride foot pod. So it is picking up other sensors in here of things that I use. We're going to connect to this amp plus. Here we go. And there you go again.
I found I actually get better connections with Ant Plus connections, just for whatever reason. So that's why I'm using my computer, and that's why I'm using the Ant Plus connections with that little dongle. You can get them on Amazon. Just type Ant Plus USB. It plugs right in, loads right up on a laptop or a computer, and gives you that option to connect with a different type of technology as well that may help you with a lot of your connection issues. Bluetooth can get very finicky, again, with those paired connections and not being able to pair with multiple devices. So I would recommend going with that Ant Plus connection if you're using a laptop or PC to solve a lot of your problems. All right, I'm getting ready to jump in on this for a ride today. One other thing I wanna talk about was the kicker snap. So I used to have the kicker snap, that was the wheel on trainer. A couple tips on how to get that set up properly so you don't have any issues is always pump that rear tire up to the same PSI. Get into the habit of that before every ride. So I believe it was about 100 PSI that I would keep that tire at. So every time I would make sure that that tire connected to the trainer is at 100 PSI. Now that knob that's on there, that tension knob, make sure you always release the pressure on that after each ride. That can leave a flat spot on your tire. And as well, when you're getting ready to actually do your ride for the day, make sure you get that proper PSI in there. Turn the tension knob until the roller just touches the rear wheel. And then I would do two full turns. Mark the wheel if you have to so you can kind of get a visual of what a full turn is. Two full turns and you should be good to go. Now with the snap, unfortunately from time to time, you have to do something called a spin down. And how you can do that is you can warm up for a little bit, uh, just get the trainer moving, get your body moving, and then you're gonna go into the settings menu in connections. And when you're connected to the snap, it should be on this wrench icon right here. You can just say, perform a calibration spin down. And you're just gonna follow the prompts on there. That spin down is important because it's gonna give you accurate power numbers during your ride. That was one of the problems somebody had recently that got one of these trainers is they're just having problems with their power output numbers are very, very low on there, and that could be one of the reasons. So, again, some of the problems that a lot of people are having is connection issues, low power numbers, dropping connections, things like that. So I hope some of these tips on how the connections go on this and maybe what the preferred method of connection is kind of helps you out. Because indoor training is super beneficial. It's great, especially when you get into setting up actual workouts on the program itself, which we'll probably do a different video for just because it'll get a little long-winded. It's super easy to set up those training programs in here instead of just going for free rides all the time. Um, and we'll go over as well maybe how to pick the courses because sometimes people want to just go for an easy ride. Next thing you know, they're climbing 2,000 feet and their legs are toast afterwards. So today we're going into a... I believe it's a 54 minute ride, 40 minutes at a pretty easy pace, uh, power level, and then we're gonna be doing a 12 to 14 minute section in the middle, which is gonna be probably at or about our threshold power level. So I hope, hope you got something out of this. Again, give the video a thumbs up if you took anything out of this that could help you. Subscribe to the channel because we're gonna have more videos on this. It was just something quick. This has been on my brain and I figure the quicker I get the info out, it may, it may save one or two of your indoor sessions, you know, from going down the toilet because of a bad connection or something like that. I'm going to get into it. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget, stay healthy, stay safe, balance that life one mile at a time, and we'll catch you on the next one. Alexa, turn on the pain cave lights. Time to ride.